Imagine a dog saving lives during World War II, sounds unbelievable right? But let me introduce you to Juliana, a great Dane who did just that. This isn't your typical tale of a dog fetching the newspaper or learning a trick. This is the story of a dog so extraordinary, she was awarded the Blue Cross Medal, a prestigious honor given to animals who have shown remarkable courage or dedication. During the height of World War II, an incendiary bomb fell into Juliana's home. These bombs were designed to start fires causing widespread destruction, but Juliana had a different plan. She extinguished the bomb in the most dog-like way possible by peeing on it. Yes, you heard that right. Juliana saved her home and potentially many lives by dousing the bomb with her urine. And that's how a courageous canine became a war hero. Did you know that Alexander the Great was accidentally buried alive? Now that's a chilling thought, isn't it? A recent theory suggests that Alexander the Great, known for his vast empire and military might, may have suffered from a rare neurological disorder called Guillain-Barre syndrome. This condition results in rapid onset muscle weakness due to the immune system damaging the peripheral nervous system. Imagine the scene. His body, paralyzed and unresponsive but his mind sharp as ever trapped in a shell that wouldn't obey. His subjects mistaking his paralysis for death prepared him for burial. The great king aware of every moment yet unable to signal that he was still alive. This theory, while not universally accepted, provides a plausible explanation for the reports that Alexander's body showed no signs of decomposition six days after his death, a key symptom of Guillain-Barre syndrome. The great conqueror had a truly tragic end, didn't he? When we think of gladiators we usually visualize burly men, right? But did you know there were also women gladiators? Yes indeed. In the heart of ancient Rome where roaring crowds and bloody spectacles were the order of the day, a small but fierce group of women stepped into the arena as gladiators. Known as gladiatrices, these women were a rarity in a domain dominated by men. While the reasons for their choice remain shrouded in mystery, it's clear they were not just there for show. Like their male counterparts, gladiatrices trained rigorously, honed their combat skills, and faced life-threatening battles. Their bravery and prowess were such that they became legends, their stories whispered in the corners of Rome. Yet, despite their strength and courage, they were often seen as novelties, their presence in the arena a subject of fascination and controversy. So, women gladiators did exist, though they were a rare sight in the arenas. The most successful pirate in history was not a fearsome man, but an extraordinary woman. In the early 19th century, a woman named Ching Shi took to the high seas and forever etched her name in the annals of piracy. But before her life as a pirate, she worked as a prostitute in China. Her life took a turn when the commander of the Red Flag fleet purchased and married her. Far from being a mere wife she was considered an equal by her husband, and she soon became an active commander in the fleet. After her husband's death she took over the reins and led the fleet to numerous victories. With her cunning tactics, she outsmarted the Chinese navy, Portuguese bounty hunters, and even British warships. Her reign was so successful that she was able to retire with her wealth and open a gambling house. Who knew that the most successful pirate would be a woman? The Avengers are not just a group of superheroes from comic books and movies. In the aftermath of World War II, a group of Jewish assassins, also known as the Avengers, emerged from the shadows. Their mission was not to save the world from alien invasions or rogue AIs, but to hunt down Nazi war criminals who had orchestrated the horrors of the Holocaust. This real-life team of Avengers didn't have superpowers, but they were driven by a powerful sense of justice and retribution. Their methods were ruthless reflecting the severity of the crimes committed by their targets. One of their most daring acts involved poisoning over 2,000 German prisoners of war. While the ethical implications of their actions are certainly a topic of debate, there's no denying the courage and determination these individuals demonstrated in their pursuit of justice. The Avengers story is a fascinating piece of history, isn't it? The Olympic Games weren't always just about physical prowess. There was a time when the arts took center stage alongside athletics. This fascinating period spanned from 1912 to 1948. During this time, the Olympic Games held competitions in the fine arts. This was a unique, perhaps even quirky element of the games that many don't know about. Can you imagine winning an Olympic medal for your poetry or your skill in painting? This was a reality for some artists. Medals were given for literature, architecture, sculpture, painting, and even music. But there was a catch. The art created had to be Olympic-themed. This required artists to blend their creativity with the spirit of athleticism and competition, resulting in some truly unique pieces of work. 
So the Olympics were once a stage for artists as well as athletes. It's a fascinating slice of Olympic history that celebrates the marriage of art and sport. Napoleon Bonaparte, a great conqueror, was once defeated by... bunnies? It's a statement that makes you chuckle, doesn't it? But it's true. The man who dominated Europe and left an indelible mark on world history was once bested by a horde of fluffy bunnies. Here's how it happened. Bonaparte had requested a rabbit hunt to be arranged for himself and his men. Now, you'd think this would be a simple recreational activity, but when the rabbits were released from their cages, they didn't scatter and run away as expected. Instead, they charged toward Bonaparte and his men in a relentless onslaught. Imagine the scene, the formidable Napoleon Bonaparte scrambling to fend off a mob of bunnies. It's a moment that adds a touch of the absurd to an otherwise serious historical figure. So next time you think of Napoleon, remember not just his military conquests, but also his unexpected defeat at the paws of a bunny army. This tale adds a touch of humor to Napoleon's otherwise formidable image. Cleopatra, the famous Egyptian queen, wasn't actually Egyptian. A surprising fact, isn't it? Yes, the woman we've come to associate with the ancient land of pyramids was in fact Greek. Born into the Ptolemaic dynasty, Cleopatra was a descendant of Ptolemy, a Macedonian general and trusted companion of none other than Alexander the Great. The Ptolemies ruled Egypt for nearly three centuries, keeping their Greek customs and language. Cleopatra was no exception. However, she was one of the few Ptolemies to actually speak Egyptian, which likely enhanced her influence and popularity among her subjects. This blend of cultures adds another layer to her fascinating story. So, despite her iconic status as an Egyptian queen, her roots trace back to Greece and Macedonia. This revelation might make you rethink everything you thought you knew about this legendary figure. So, Cleopatra, the famous Egyptian queen, was actually Greek. Did you know that ketchup was once sold as medicine? Yes, you heard that right. Back in the 1830s this ubiquitous condiment had a completely different reputation. It was not the go-to topping for your fries or the secret ingredient in your meatloaf. Instead, ketchup was marketed as a cure for upset stomachs. An Ohio physician named John Cook was the one who propelled ketchup into the medicinal limelight. He believed that tomatoes had certain health benefits and started selling ketchup as a form of treatment. This was long before we had the modern medicines we rely on today, and people were always on the lookout for potential remedies to common ailments. However, it wasn't until the late 19th century that ketchup was popularized as a condiment, changing the way we see and use it forever. So the next time you use ketchup, remember its medicinal past. Abraham Lincoln wasn't just a president, he was also a wrestler. Yes, you heard it right. Our six foot four, iconic president, known for his leadership during the Civil War, also had a rather unusual hobby. Abraham Lincoln was a renowned wrestler before he entered the world of politics. In the small town of New Salem, Illinois, Lincoln was known as an elite fighter. His towering height and strong physique made him a formidable opponent. Out of around 300 wrestling matches, Lincoln tasted defeat only once. His wrestling prowess was such that he earned a reputation that stretched far beyond the boundaries of New Salem. His wrestling career was so impressive that he even found a place in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame honors him as an outstanding American for his wrestling skills. And there you have it, Abraham Lincoln, a revered president, a legendary statesman, and a formidable wrestler. Isn't it fascinating to know that this revered president was also a formidable wrestler? 